Praise God, praise God. Yes. Sometimes I forget to turn the video off, and on part one, I forgot to turn it off. So it's got a little longer segment on it than I wanted. But that's all right, too. Amen. I'm talking about the wedding garment. I'm just going to read the first verse of our opening text. Matthew 22 and 12. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither without or not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Yes. Amen. That's not how we want to be going to heaven. Amen. I want to read a scripture, and it's always a difficult proposition to teach a scripture. Because so many get offended these days we live in. But I don't think us folks in this room will get so offended. Because we're used to the old ways. Number two is Christ and the church. Mm. Ephesians 5.23 For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ... Mm. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now a lot of people think that Paul was trying to teach the husbands and the wives, but this lesson was not really about the husband and the wife. You know, we've always had marriage counselors for that idea and people to give us understanding about how to treat one another. But you know, they didn't have many examples of how Christ loved the people, how he loved the church. And so Paul was using the illustration that was common back then that the husband was the head of the wife, but he said, even as Christ is head of the church. Now, the church don't want the head Jesus Christ, I can tell you right now. I was in the, a church that I once used to go to and was quite prominent in that church. And I went there after I broke my neck and was visiting, and I said, God, what's wrong with this place? They don't love me anymore. And you know how sometimes people fall out of love, so to speak, and they do that in the church world, too. Yes. And I said, God, what's wrong? I haven't done anything to these people. He said, look up on the board. You'll see they don't even love me either. And I looked at the Church of God Declaration of Faith. And I'm Church of God preacher. But I think we made some mistakes, too. For on that list of 16 declarations, there's not at the head of the list that we're supposed to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength with everything that's within us. The second law is like unto it where Jesus told him, said, love your neighbor as yourself. And one man said, well, who is my neighbor? I need an illustration. And he said, well, there was a, a Samaritan that fell among thieves. 
And he was laid on the side of the road in the ditch, so to speak. And here come a priest along the side of the road. And he saw him. He was on the same side of the road, evidently, because the Bible said that he crossed the road to the other side to get around the man and not look at him. In other words, he wasn't about to help him. And here come a Levite. That was a helper of the priest. Two of the supposedly most righteous men in the church. And he stooped over and looked at the man. He didn't lift a finger to help either. And here comes, well, it, I take it back. It was not a Samaritan that fell among thieves. It was just a man, it says. But here comes a Samaritan who were thought of as dogs, according to Jewish tradition. Because they were mixed married among Jews and the Gentiles. And a Samaritan went over and got the man up. And he poured in the oil and the wine and soothed his aching body. And then he put him on his own beast, which was probably a donkey. And he carried him to the next inn. And he said, take care of this man. Whatever it costs, take care of him, and I'll be back, and I'll pay you for it. And he left him some money and said, whatever, it's over. You let me know, and I'll take care of it. And he said, who was the neighbor? And the priest said it was the Samaritan was the neighbor. He knew the answer to the question. But then Jesus said, go and do likewise. But in our church... We didn't put that second commandment either to love your neighbor as yourself. And that was Jesus' explanation. That's how important it was to Jesus. They forgot it in the church. I said something to my mother about it. And she said, oh, it's understood. I said, not by most church members I know. They don't understand love God or love your neighbor either. You can't do those two simple things. Those are the things that give us an example how Christ loved him, loved the church so much he gave himself for it. He gave himself. He gave his life on Calvary as a sacrifice for me and you. And we're supposed to be crucified with Christ. Yet we're not dead, but we live. But not us. Christ liveth in us. That's what it means to be a Christian. Christ lives in us. That he might present to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. What was he talking about? Their physical dress? Well, let's look at another place where Jesus was talking about the Pharisees. He said they're like the tombs, the sepulchers. All on the outside, they're whited. But on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones. They're full of extortion and excess. That's what God was trying to get rid of out of the church of that day. He wanted to get rid of the extortion and excess. You say, where was the extortion and excess? Do you know that Jesus went to the temple and threw the money changers out? Because when they were changing the money, they charged them extra for what they were doing. Because they had Gentile money and they wouldn't accept the Gentile money. They wouldn't give them the value of Jewish money. They'd give them like 10% less. So that they could make some money off of them. Here they are given to the church. Their tithe. And the priests are in there scamming them. Not giving them the full value. And if they brought an animal to sacrifice. They just reject the animal. And they say oh, oh by the way I got one over here I'll sell you. 
and could be that they actually took that one from somebody else they had rejected and sold it to somebody else as a good one. That's how them type of men thought. They were scamming God. You know, you're not going to get to heaven by scamming God. And you're not a better lawyer than Jesus Christ. He's our advocate before the Father, which sees everything. So he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Think about it. Blessed are the pure in heart. Who shall ascend to the holy hill of God? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, would not lift it up his soul unto vanity. He's going to see God. Let me tell you something. You've got to do more than just say you're living for God. you got to really live it. Amen. Brother, do you want me to play a song or you want to sing another song? Okay, that's fine with me. I don't mind. I, I got a bunch of them. I got more than we'll play today. But I thank God for them. Here's a song that says, I know I'm going there. Sorry about that. I've done it again.